Hello and welcome back to the Code with Legacy channel. In this video, we'll explore how to create and deploy a React.js application to Azure DevOps. Basically, we're going to explore how to add all those cool features, different pipelines like continuous integration, continuous deployment, how to run different tests. We're going to explore a lot of different things. I'm actually going to make this a whole series because there's way too many things to discuss and I just want to keep things organized and we'll discuss one main concept per video. I'm also going to show you how to do alternative options. For example, we're going to do Docker and uh, for deploying our application, but I'm also going to show you a non-Docker approach as a regular web app. So these are many things that we're going to cover and I'm always going to be putting down useful links and other videos in the description. So please do be sure to check that after you're done with the video. Okay. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm going to keep everything very basic. Like I haven't even created a project or a GitHub repo yet because I want to show you how to do those and how to do those in a way that's going to make things easier on you. But of course, I'll also show you what to, what to do if you have an existing repo. Okay. So I'm going to create an uh, we're here in Azure DevOps. Okay, so I'm going to create a new project. We'll call it Tutorial. Okay, now this is all we have to do, really. Leave everything at the default settings or just add a description if you want to. Now let's go over to GitHub. And I've, I have the Marketplace open here because there's something we need to do here. So the Marketplace can be accessed from here. So go there and then type Azure Pipeline and then download this app. I already have it, that's why it shows me this, but if you didn't have it, there would be an install button over here, so make sure you do that. Then I'm going to go and create a new repository. I already have the code locally over here, my React.js application, but I'm just, uh, you know, I'm going to create the repo for it. So I'll just call it tutorial website, then we'll leave it public so that you guys can access this maybe. and. Well, you won't be able to access it exactly, but uh, you can view it. So here's the Azure Pipelines button. If you click on this, then this creates a link between your GitHub repo and the Azure DevOps uh, service. Now, you can just click on this right now, or I'll show you how to do it later. So I'm just going to leave this unchecked so that I can show you, for those of you who have an existing repo, I'll show you how to do this, uh, you know, so let's just continue creating a repo. And here I'm just going to push an existing repo. So let me just add this. I don't think I've added it yet. Then we're going to do uh, get commit, initial commit. And then I'm going to do a push. Wait, I need to set this first. Okay. Then I'm going to just do these commands one by one. All right. And now the push is complete. Now, if I refresh this, we see our code over here. Good. Now let's go over to Azure DevOps and come down here into repos. Actually, I'm going to create a pipeline directly because what you could do, for example, is go into repos and then import your GitHub repo over here just by pasting in the URL, for example, but I'm not going to do this because if I import the GitHub repo in here, then it's going to have nothing to do with my local code over here. So for example, if I uh, push update to my code, if I make some changes over here and then commit and push to my GitHub, it's not going to reflect in Azure DevOps because then you, ha you have to do things uh, a bit differently. like basically you have to use azure azure repos okay the azure repos feature here instead of github and i prefer using github so i'm going to use uh, i'm going to create my pipeline directly using github for example if i go into pipelines and then create pipelines then there's this azure repos git option it's basically their version of github you can think of it like that um, but i prefer using the traditional github so i'm just going to use github directly over here. Okay. So I just click on GitHub over here and then it's going to select a repo. Just click on your repo. 
Now for configure, this is where it's important to know what you're doing. There are many different templates here. These are all templates. You can create a starter template, or which is a very generic one, or you can select one of these, which kind of gives you pre-built commands. Now this depends on what you're doing. For example, node.js with React. This is what I would do if I was uh, not using Docker. Docker is what we're gonna do in this video. So for example, if I clicked on node.js with React, then it would show me how to deploy a React JS application normally, the normal way. But I want to use Docker as a means of deployment, so I'm gonna come down here and select this one. Now, this is where it might, okay, just click the correct subscription. All right, now this is where it's gonna ask for a container registry. So we kinda need to stop here and instead go into our, our Azure account, portal.azure.com. And then I will make a resource group called tutorial. This is, this is generally the first thing that you do. When you begin a new project, you wanna create a new resource group. It's basically like a container in which you're gonna create all your different resources. Okay, and there we go. Now I'm going to create what we need. What, what do we need to create? We need to create uh, Azure Container Registry. It's basically where you can create and host Docker images. So I'll go to Container Registries, or actually, let me show you how to do that properly. I just have it in there because I've been using it lately. But what you can do here is container registries, okay, in services, then click on this. I already have one in there, but I'm gonna create a new one, obviously, because that's for some other website. Now I'm gonna select the resource group tutorial, then I'm gonna enter a name, I'll call it tutorial website. Then I'm going to, this is a pricing plan, go for basic, Okay, and if you want to see what the pricing is, you can go over here. And I need to see this again myself. What was it? All ah, right, so this is what the basic is gonna cost you. Unfortunately, there is no free uh, option for container, container registries, which is why you may want to check out the other one instead, the other video that I'm gonna make where we just do this without Docker. Okay, so you can technically stop this video right here and go watch that other one, which should be uploaded around the time I upload this one. Okay, so that's something for your convenience. I'm just gonna delete this one, this group, this resource group as soon as I'm done with it. Okay, and I'm just gonna continue. Then create, because I, I don't want this using up my credits. So once this is done, this may take some time also to update, kind of. Once you create these things, it can take some time for them to deploy. So this might take some time over here, for example. I don't think it's gonna show up. I may need to refresh for a bit and try again later, in which case I'll pause the video. But let's hope that it's there. Ah, there we are, good. It took way longer the first time. So just give it a name. I'm gonna call it tutorial. And then, okay, this is important. Actually, wait, no, this is not important. Not not yet. Docker file is something we'll create later. Now it's gonna generate a sample pipeline for us, a YAML file. Cool. So I'm just gonna leave this over here because uh, we don't have a Docker file yet. So I cannot run this pipeline. So I need to actually go and create that Docker file first. So let's go over here. And this is where we're gonna be for a few minutes. So come over here and then we need to create a few files. One, we create a Docker ignore. Okay, this is like a git ignore. And this tells us what files we don't want Docker, Docker to pick up on. Node modules, we don't want it to pick up on that. And we don't want it, want it to pick up on the dist folder either. I'm gonna show you what this folder is. Because uh, before I deploy this to Docker, before I run this entire pipeline, I'm going to test it locally because I want to make sure that my application is working. Okay, you don't deploy something without testing it first. 
Okay, so I'm gonna create a new file called Docker file and be sure to keep that F capital, uh, so, sorry, small case. I made this capital and I wasted like half an hour because of that. Okay, so the Docker file, I'm just gonna copy paste the, the contents of this over. Here we have the node version that we're gonna be using, node 18. You can swap this out with whatever you have installed. Then we're gonna use work there. This basically creates a directory within our Docker image that everything is gonna be placed in. Then we copy over the package.json files, both of them, the lock and the, and the normal one. This tells Docker what to install when we run the npm install command. Then we do copy this copy command. Basically, the dot over here implies copy everything from the root directory where the Docker file is placed, okay, where this everything in here, and place it, that's what the second dot means, it, that's a destination. The first one is source, second is destination. So the second one means place it in the root directory of the Docker image. So here's the port that we're gonna be using, 5173. I'm actually gonna change this to 4173 because I want to run a preview build, a production build. And because if I did dev, that's a development build and I don't want that. So let me just tell you that this is gonna, these two commands are gonna change depending on how you set up your React application. For example, if you have like uh, create React app, then I believe it's gonna be 8,000. That's the port that it uses. You can find out pretty easily actually um, if you run like npm run start, I believe, for your create React app, it's gonna show you the port. For example, if I run npm run dev, which is for Vite, then which is what I'm using. So it's gonna show you the port right here, okay? And if I run preview, you'll see that it shows me the port that it's using. And, oh, I didn't build my project. So let me build it first. Okay. I forgot, forgot about that. So npm run, this is like production build. So npm run build, okay. And then we run this command. So if I run the preview now, this creates it. So if I click on this, let me, let me just go and show you, this is what the website looks like. And uh, basically that's it. If I just type in my name over here and I type in one, two, three, then it's gonna take me to the homepage. That's all this website is, it's just a demo website. So coming back over here, um, yeah, these three commands are gonna change a bit depending on how you have your configuration set up. I'm gonna have some alternate videos made down in the description below so you guys can go check it out. Like I I'm gonna make one with the backend, for example, one with the server side rendering. I'll make these eventually and link them down in the description below. So you can go check those out based on your circumstances. But this video is focused towards those with a, a single React application, okay? No backend or anything else. All right, so now that we're done there, let's go over to the compose file. This is something I created when I paused the video. So this is your Docker version. Then here you have the services. So we just name it anything like website, then build. So I just put dot over here to mean the root directory because um, for example, if we had created something like this, let me just show you real quick for those of you who have a different setup. So if I take all this, all these files, and I put them in this folder, my blog, okay? So if I do it like this, then I would do slash my blog, okay? because that's relative to this file. Let me just undo that. All right. And it's not very happy with me. Git is not very happy with me doing that. So it's gonna be, let me just refresh this real quick. Okay, I'm back. I just had to reload Visual Studio. So what do we do now? Well, we have our files ready. Now, if you have Docker installed locally, which I would recommend, then you can do the docker compose up command to verify that your Docker image is being created successfully. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna be a pain if you keep uploading to Azure Container Registry and then looking at the errors over there, which, you know, it's better to 
debug everything locally. So you can see that this has created successfully. I've already ran the container before this video. That's why it's it's built so quickly because it's, it's already cached. Otherwise, it's going to take a minute or two. So just click on this and this opens up so we know it's working. All right. So now I'm just going to close this container. We have our files ready. So now we're going to go and continue with the next step on Azure DevOps. So actually, we need to first push these changes. Okay, we need to add these to our repo so that the Azure, you know, the Azure can detect our Docker file. So added Docker files. And then we'll push this change. Time to go back to where we were. So our deployment was complete. Where were we? Now I want to run this. Okay, this should push it to our container registry. All right, commit. This is gonna make this pipelines.yaml file. Let's see how this goes. It's also gonna run it for us. So we can see it in, he, in here, in, in the queue. All right, so our Docker application is now complete. You can go here and check the individual details. You can see all our commands running, the copy command, the install command, adding those packages. You can take a look at this in detail if you want to later. It's pretty cool if you're seeing all this happen. This is the image being created, etc., etc. Pretty cool stuff. So our registry, now let's just uh, go over here. Let me, let me just refresh first. Anything that needs to update can update. Then we'll go to our container registry. So go to resource. This is our container registry. Now, if you go to repositories, that's where we should look for our image. And there it is. So this should appear here if everything was successful. Cool. All right, so I'm actually gonna stop this video right here and we're gonna continue in the next. I don't want to drag this video out too long. I don't want to combine all these concepts into a single video. It makes it harder for people to come in, in, the, in between as well for those who only want to learn a specific part in the video. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right here and in the next video, we'll discuss how to do the deployment. This video has basically been the CI pipeline so the next video is going to be the CD, the release pipeline. Okay, see you guys in the next video.